screaming. That's pretty cool. Good morning, happy Saturday. So today's gonna be a big day. There's a lot to do around the house with unpacking things, reorganizing the things that we are packing, figuring out what we need in order to make this space work for us and our things. So it'll be a busy day in that sense, but also today I plan to mail off my blanket design. So this blanket is gonna go to a magazine and the pattern will be published sometime in the spring. And so I can't show you the blanket, but I need to find my iron so that I can steam block it. <laughs> so hopefully that can help the stitches kind of lay a little bit better. It can help with edges not curl so much. It can just, you know, make it look like a much nicer finished piece. The post office is open until 1230 today. So that is a big goal to get that taken care of. And I would also love to spend a little time at the library working on that pattern the digital copy of the pattern is not due until the 15th so i have some time but i would really like to sit down hunker down and get a lot of good work done on that pattern and also to just get out of the house so the library is not open until 10 o'clock today i think and so i have a little time i'm gonna get ready for the day and probably do a little bit of unpacking see if i can find the iron and then from there i think i We'll get ready to like go and take care of some errands. The post office is like right across the street from the library. It's really close. So I think I can just park at one and then walk to the other to take care of my errands. I already opened my Stress Knits Advent. These colors are really beautiful. I really don't know what I want to do with them other than the 24 days socks, which I could actually spend some more time working on right now, which I'm so excited about. So maybe I'll wind up some more of my minis to do that, but that will use a minuscule amount of yarn. So then I need to figure out what I want to do with the rest. They're all tonals, which I'm not sure what kind of project I want to use them for. So I gotta still think about it and see what I may want to do. So let's get ready for the day. Okay, we are freshly showered and ready to go, but I wanted to stop and share with you something really quick. So I got an email yesterday from someone who had purchased a pattern from me, the Mountains Call Sock Pattern, and they had some questions and concerns because the color work portion on the leg was not fitting over their heel. They hadn't knit a lot of socks before, and so I gave them a lot of tips for knitting color work socks that helped me to make sure that like a color work portion of a sock will fit over my heel just to help make the experience better for next time. And I thought that now would be a great time to share with you those tips that I shared. Now I have my socks here, but I've been wearing them as you've seen in previous vlogs. And so they don't look super pretty because <laughs> I need to wash them. But this is the color work portion that I was talking about. It is three colors in the same row. Um, for a few spots in here, but I have a basic modification within the pattern to just use two colors at once. To, and you can always go back in and duplicate stitch the extra colors if you'd want. But I think that this gives the most defined look of the mountains. The rest of the sock is pretty simple. It's just a ribbed sock. So ultimate cozy factor, but this is really the star of the show. Now my tips for knitting color work. One, try on your sock before you finish. Even now, after all the socks I've knit, I still sometimes have issues with my color work or like a slip stitch motif on a sock or a cable sock even, pulling too tight and not being able to fit it over my heel comfortably. So I definitely recommend you try on the sock. You could do it right after the color work portion. You could do it after a few rows just to make sure that your tension is doing okay. It doesn't matter, but before you finish the whole sock, try it on. Use double pointed needles or magic loop. In my experience, is the easiest to not drop your stitches. And try on that sock. Try it on frequently so you know and you're confident that that sock is gonna fit you the way it needs to. And then if you need to make adjustments, you can change your needle size from there. Undo just a couple rows if you need to and rework them. Maybe there's a row or two of three colors in the same round that just gets too tight and you know that you just have to fix that a little bit. And so try it on and then don't be afraid to just frog a couple rounds so that you can get the fit that works for you. And you'll feel better about that if you don't wait till the end of the sock to find out the sock doesn't fit you well. Because of the nature of color work, it doesn't stretch as much as regular knitting. And so it's really important to make sure that it fits you. I also go up in needle size, which I recommend in my pattern, 
but for you, you might need to go up two needle sizes depending on how you knit. And so again, that's something you just need to try out and see what works for you. You might need to go up multiple needle sizes in order to get a loose enough fit to get the color work to work for you. And then my last big tip for knitting color work is to stretch your stitches out after every couple color changes as you are knitting. And this has been the biggest help for me in stretching everything out and making sure that it will fit. In normal knitting, this is like the wrong side of the word. In normal knitting, the yarn that you're using is all interwoven. And so it has some give and take, you know, if you pull in one spot, the tension from that pull will kind of spread out throughout the rest of the sock, if that makes sense. Whereas for color work, everything is kind of like stuck where it is because there's so many other strands kind of interwoven that any pull that you have on a sock only really spreads out to the floats that you have loose and it doesn't go too much farther than that. So there's less stretch. So after every couple stitches knitting color work, I just stop what I'm doing, drop my yarns, and I just pull on my stitches, spread them as far apart as I can on the needles, and then I continue on and I do a couple more stitches and spread them out. Maybe I'll do like five or six stitches, depending on the pattern. I'll just make sure I include at least one or two color changes in that section before I start pulling the stitches apart. And that ensures that the floats I have in the back are stretched as long as they need to in order for those stitches to stretch as much as I need to. And that has really helped me to make sure my stitches are spread out as much as possible. I do this on Magic Loop, I do this on TPNs, I do this on 9-inch circulars, but that's how I get my color work to spread out as much as possible. Ta-da! So hopefully those tips helped you. Let me know down below if you have any color work tips. I would love to just help makers that are starting out with color work feel confident enough to do this super cute sock pattern. Hi, girly. Oh, what have you got? Can you show it? Oh, did you find your airplane? Yay, so fun. Okay, so right now I'm in what we have affectionately named the crap room. We weren't sure it was like ambiguous on the box or it went somewhere like the linen closet that we literally don't have a linen closet here or, you know, storage things and we're just not quite sure where we'll store them. Honestly, we thought this room would look way worse than it does. So we're very happy that things, things are easy to get to right now, but I need to look and find a linen closet box because I think that's where I'll find the iron so I can steam my blanket. been a busy day all sorts of things going on but first and foremost I was able to mail off my package so the blanket is steamed ready to go it has been sent so that is a huge weight off my plate now I'm doing a lot more focusing on the written pattern which includes a lot of formatting for the magazine and providing pictures, uh, work in progress photos and things like that, all sorts of, you know, little online things to fill out. And I got a really good start today at the library. I want to make a goal for myself to spend a little bit of time every day leading up until the due date, which is next Thursday, to set aside time and work on this pattern. So I got a really good chunk of it done. I think I completed the full repeat of color changes and stitch counts and things. So I think I can just copy and paste and change row counts. And of course, just double checking everything. But I got a really good 
section done. And there's still more to do for sure, but I feel really, really good about where I'm at. And so we did that. I came home after getting a little bit of work done and we spent some time unloading boxes. And problem is this space is so different than every other apartment we've lived in. So even though we tried to tell the movers to put certain boxes in certain rooms, I still feel like there's a lot of running around and finding new spots for things. The linen closet's a big one. Where do we put linens? We have like bathroom linens and we have like bed linens and where do they go? And so now we have, you know, all this extra stuff. We're just trying to figure out like where it belongs, truly because we don't have the same kinds of spaces that we used to. And I think that that is not a space issue per se, because we're in a larger square footage than any apartment we've lived in, but I think it's the nature of this house being 150 years old. They don't have the same kinds of organization set up. And it's had some updates and improvements since then, of course, but still, we don't have a true pantry, things like that, that just trying to figure out how our things are going to work in this space is a little bit messier than I think we anticipated. So we did a lot of work with George's room, got most every box unpacked there and things are kind of just turning around. I need to figure out how to store the toys that are out of rotation. I like to do a toy rotation, only leave some of them out to play with so that she has fresh eyes for toys as they come back into rotation to be played with. So I need to figure out where to store those since we don't have the same kinds of closet situations. She does not have a closet in her room either. So just figuring out a new solution for that. It started opening boxes for my craft room area. We're gonna make that the nursery storage and craft room so we only have one kid but we were planning on eventually having more so we have to put all of the baby stuff somewhere <laughs> and there ends up being a lot of it and since george is now a toddler there's lots of things she's outgrown between like a high chair her breast net her infant car seat all of her previous clothes all sorts of things so i'm gonna use the closet in the craft room to store hopefully all the baby things and put that in the back because it goes underneath the stairs. So it's like an under the stairs cupboard. And then in the front will be my crafting things. And then the room will be used as a crafting space. And then whenever we decide to have another kid, we can convert the craft room into a nursery pretty easily by just setting up a crib and make shifting things around a little bit. So I know the purpose of that space. Now it's just figuring out how to put things in that space. I packed a little bit of our room. It doesn't look like it because there's still lots of boxes, but I got like half of my closet set up and about half of Dallin's closet set up. We took out some of the carpet boxes that were getting stashed down in the front room area to clear a little bit more space, did a little bit of kitchen organizing. So it's in the stage where it looks worse before it gets better. <laughs> so Hopefully within the next couple days, we'll really start to feel settled into the space and have a good idea of what else we need, like storage solution wise, in order to have the space work for us. So that's mostly what we did. We went to Chick-fil-A afterwards and Georgia got to play on the play place. In California, they didn't have any play places open. So we were able to spend a lot of time in the play place with her and she really, really enjoyed it. She had a great time. So I'm glad she could burn off some energy that way. Now we are home. I worked on my sock for my dad. I didn't have too much longer to go. Sorry, this lighting is so bad. <laughs> but I finished it, yay! I ended up doing 55 rows on the foot. I've just been putting in a couple rounds here and there. And so I only had like maybe 10 rounds left to do when we left to go get dinner and then the toe. And so I was able to finish those out and about. And now my toe is done, I did that here. I I did an oopsie, I switched to magic loop. I just grabbed the closest magic loop needles and I thought that they were ready with my size one, but they have my US 1.5 needles on them from my gnome. 
scarf that I made a few days ago. So technically this toe is at a looser gauge than the rest of the sock and I can feel it with my hands comparing the two, but I have not decided yet if I care enough. Saying it out loud, I feel like I care enough, but I really don't want to rip it out. No, the toe gets a lot of wear, so it really should be at a tighter gauge. Mm, that's what's bugging me. So it's finished, but I might rip it out and then rework it during church tomorrow. And then it won't feel like a waste of time because I'm working on it while I'm doing something else. Maybe I'll do that. Visually, you can tell it's a little bit looser if you know to look for it, but gauge-wise, like the feel of fabric, totally different. And yeah, it's a different enough gauge. I'm one who almost always goes back and fixes things because I know that I feel better about it when I do. So it, make, so it makes me sad, but I know once I fix the toe, I'll feel better about it. So it's finished. But I'll probably fix it tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow will be a fun day. We'll have church. A little bit of time spent with family. Dallin and I started making some bread dough tonight. And so we'll have some fresh bread tomorrow. And hopefully I'll get lots of knitting time. I think I might work on my advent sock a little bit. To kind of see how that shapes up. Since I really haven't touched it. I would love to get started on the texture on my husband's Christmas Eve socks. I would love to fix this toe and then at least cast on the second sock to get started on that and work on my husband's cardigan. So lots of like little goals for socks and then working on the back panel of my husband's cardigan is like the big thing. So I need to remember what's most important <laughs> and keep that in mind. But until tomorrow, happy making. Bye.